ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧಿ ತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 May the Lord protect us. May He nourish us. May we acquire the capacity to study and understand the scriptures. May our study be brilliant and may we not cavil at each other. Om, peace, peace, peace and to us all. Dear brothers and sisters, loving Sai Ram to all of you. we welcome all of you for the online satsang of the sri sat sai baba center of arcadia and today we are resuming our study circle on the sutra vahini this is the commentary on brahma sutras which are given by the sage badarayana and there are a lot of bhashyas or commentaries one of the ma- major thing is shankara bhashyam there are many and here we are fortunate and blessed the avatar himself has given us the beautiful commentary because they give the inner meaning of the scriptures because a lot of us know the literal meaning but in spiritual uh, statements or uh, uh, scriptures the more important is inner and even more important than inner meaning is divine meaning that is called paramarthika satyam or the divine truth okay go ahead <coughs> look inward not merely outward however ordinary humans struggle to win material happiness and exterior pleasures they do not seek the spiritual bliss ananda that the atma their inner reality can grant they lose the great opportunity of experiencing it and they don't take any steps appropriate for the purpose all the time their attention is directed only to the external world it does not turn inward pashu animal is so named because it looks outward pashyati pashyati iti pashu look outward is the characteristic of animals not of people the important organs of sense perception in the human body the eye the nose the tongue etc all open outward in order to contact external objects so one has to conclude that the physical urge the body's vision is all external the inner world is not as easily accessible as the outer world perhaps only one among many one in a million does contact and win this inner atmic reality through inward vision that person is the wise one gyani the person born with a sense of true mission of human life has to gain that goal the goal of spiritual bliss the fundamental eternal spiritual bliss that supreme attainment renders life valid meaningful and worthwhile so good so you i think uh, we'll come back to that you jumped i think one se- one section oh. so the next section correct vision reveals unity and diversity after that is gain eternity to divine grace anyway they are all divine so we will come back to that later so you read it divine uh, okay. gain eternity gain eternity through divine grace the person who is deep in grief must seek refuge in one who is floating on spiritual bliss ananda filled with joy bondage plunges one into sorrow while the lord is total bliss personified therefore one can be completely cured of grief only by resorting to the inexhaustible spring of delight the lord and what exactly is liberation moksha it is release from grief the absence of grief 
the attainment of spiritual bliss. The Supreme Self, the Sovereign Lord, is the embodiment of indivisible sweetness, rasa, the treasure house of bliss. Hence, those who seek and secure his grace gain eternity itself. The eternity thus gained has no place for the sense perceptions of sound, touch, form, taste, and smell. It has neither beginning nor end. One must gradually and steadily endeavor to acquire that victory. One must proceed progressively from the gross to the subtle, from the subtle to the causal, and from the causal level, one must finally merge in the prime cause. That is to say, the spiritual journey has to be from gross, stula, to subtle, sukshma, to causal, karana, to mergence in the supreme cause. This is the regular route. So here, Swami, the previous paragraph that I read before, what benefit can a destitute gain if he seeks another destitute? The bound person who relies on no one who is not bound can get rid of bonds and move about freely. That one which is not bound is the divine. And that is what this is about. The person who, who is deep in grief must seek refuge in one who is floating on spiritual bliss and ananda, filled with joy. And that is the true guru, the, the one that is floating in joy. Good. Anyway, so the next one is connected. We'll, 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 come, we'll come to that. So the whole thing is we always talk liberation. That means people get scared. So the, as I said, I heard one, this man from Australia, he went, so asked Swami, what do you want? Uh, I want liberation, Swami. Because people, okay, okay, come uh, after four days, I'll uh, give you liberation. So then after four days, he completely disappeared. He was scared. So if he's liberated, <laughs> that means he was... Uh, so sometimes we don't mean what liberation means. So this is my God. So even my daughter, uh, first Karen, she asked, first time, she was only 14. She doesn't even understand. That's why we are like kids in front of God. We are all like that. What do you want? I want liberation, Swami. Right now, Swami, as a nice father, he said, he smiled and ignored. He has to get married, go to college, he has to get married, then he has children, go through the pain. So that is why we start in the first Brahma Sutra itself. You need to have adhikari qualities. Brahma Ved, that is why you should have the athato jijnajas After these qualifications only, you can attain liberation. So our whole practice is to get those credentials, those qualifications. Then we get the uh, liberation. What is the liberation? Liberation from bondage. So then why, why should we get liberation? We are very happy. It says what it gives is complete relief of grief. That means most of the time in life when you have sorrows, it is temporarily relieved. You are hungry, you get the food, then the hunger is gone. But again, after six hours, again you get hungry, again it is. So it is temporary relief. Anything, any other sleep, whatever things in life we have, temporarily you get that, you get it, and you relieve. But this is called Atyantika Dukhanavruti. Once for all, all your sorrows are gone. Some example is, they say, is in heaven. That you eat any amount that you eat and drink, you won't get stomach ache, you won't get GI upset. Because there is devatas have that gift. But this is even much more that That means completely no more grief and sorrow like Buddha tried and attained nirvana. And Narantashaya Ananda Prapti. Unending bliss. That's why Swami sings that love is my form, bliss is my food. Just you are always in bliss. So what kind of bliss? What is the bliss is? The usual bliss we have is Manushyananda. We talked about it earlier where you are a young man, you are strong, you are very intelligent, you have all the wealth in the world, you have all the power in the world, and uh, so intellectually, physically strong, you have everything. So everything what you have, that is called only one unit of Manushyananda. You think that guy is a successful man, happy, because he has got health, wealth, power, and then strength. Everything he has got, and character too, whereas and young. Youthful, everybody wants to be youthful as we get older, then you realize. But this Ananda, Brahmananda, we talked about stages. 
How much is it? 10 to the power of 18. But it's quintillion, so they call it. We can't even imagine. We know only, I know, a billion, trillion things. So that much happiness, they are none that thing. They are so much joyful. These great saints and sages, they don't know what is sorrow. They are always in bliss. Even though their body may be going through a lot of suffering, they live in the bliss. That is liberation. That is the thing Swami is talking about. And for that, so you cannot live in the uh, uh, gross body, stola. You should go to, that is why we talked about the pancha koshas from uh, deha maya kosha, you go to prana maya, then mano maya, vijnana maya, ananda maya. So you need to travel, then only you go to that uh, bliss sheet. So this is very uh, important. So you we talked about this in Bhruguvalli. So all of this, please remember, these are all uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the wonderful truths Swami was talking about. So we need to think about it. Okay, now the one which when you read it, I can read it again. <laughs> Look inward, not merely outward. However, ordinary humans struggle to win material happiness and external pleasures. They do not seek the spiritual bliss, ananda, that the Atma, their inner reality, can grant. They lose the great opportunity of experiencing it and they don't take any steps appropriate for the purpose. All the time their attention is directed only to the external world. It does not turn inward. Pasu, animal, is so named because it looks outward. Pashyati. Pashyati iti pasu. Looking outward is the characteristic of animals, not of people. The important organs of sense perception in the human body, the eye, the nose, the tongue, etc., all open outward in order to contact external objects. So one has to conclude that the physical urge, the body's vision, is all external. The inner world is not as easily accessible as the outer world is. Perhaps only one among many, one in a million, does contact and win this inner Atmic reality through inward vision. That person is the wise one, Kyani. That the person born with a sense of the true mission of human life has to gain the goal, the goal of spiritual bliss, the fundamental eternal spiritual bliss. That supreme attainment renders life valid, meaningful, and worthwhile. So that is the purpose of life. The last sentence, that supreme attainment renders life valid. That means anything else we do, this life is a waste. It's not valid. It says valid, meaningful. If you don't do that, it is without meaning. And then he says worthwhile. So if you don't do that, it is not worth anything. So this pursuit of the inner vision is, is the key, the purpose of this life. Thank you. Yeah, the whole thing here is talking about, we are all in pursuit of happiness. I don't think, is there anybody who wants to be unhappy? I don't know, even animals, animals, everybody wants to be happy. So, but the thing is in searching in wrong place. That is the whole problem. Is what these great masters, avatars show that, yeah, you are searching in the wrong place. Swami gives the example of a old woman. She lost a needle in the uh, house somewhere, and uh, she went there outside in the street and looking for the needle under, because there is a light there, because, because uh, grandma, why are you where are looking? So, because there is light. Where did you lose? In the house. You lose, uh, last in the house, go and look in the house, not outside, because there is. Similarly, we are all looking in the wrong place. That is why Swami repeatedly said, pleasure is, interval between two planes. Most of us are only after pleasures. You can go to a nice restaurant, good food. One day you enjoy another one Italian, next day you want to go to Thai, another day you go to Indian restaurant, another day you go to Spanish, another day. It will never end because, uh, and same thing with sites, you want to go to Italy, another time you go to Germany, another time you go to Australia. To chase, there is a beautiful, this Chukulu, which in Chukantiki, Chuku Trupti Ledura. They go on saying it will never be satisfied, always. Tata Kim, what more, what more? So, this is the nature of the senses. Whatever, you want a nice car, they want some other new model. So, 
is this is never ending that swami says bottomless pit so this is always so you need to take yeah satisfied desires nothing wrong that is why ideally man minus desire is god but swami says if you say that nobody will come to uh, ask him nobody will see him so swami is kind kind says have a ceiling on desires so cut it down cut it down if you want to have 100 sarees you have 10 you have 10 one if you want 10 suits you have one a shoe so everything is cut down and eventually you should be like ramana ramakrishna just a loin cloth in this uh, roof in the sky and floor we should be able to be happy without depending if you have it it is good like janaka but whether you have it or not you are always happy because we are all pashus lord shiva another name for him is pashupati so that a lot of people think he is just a head of animals no he is not pashu he, we are all pashus who is a pashu everybody who is bound pashu there are two meanings pashu pashu means pasham that is like a, always god you should say he has got pasham ankusham what are so all the gods they describe he has even got ganesha pashu and ankusha pashu means this noose so we are all bound by the noose of time space causation our relationships and everything so everybody is a pashu the human beings and not only animal human beings even they say even gods brahma because they're all bound by this thing because they're bound pashupati is the master of these things so pashu and pashupati so once you get it of this bondage with the help of lord shiva by uh, praying to him or self inquiry then you are free for that another meaning of pashu is one is who is bound by pasham another is the one who looks outside pashyate iti pashu always looking outside what is happening here what is there so is there ever that called curious jar they are interested in everything in the world they want to know everything so they, how is it going to affect what happens in something in the, we need to know more important swami says what is happening to within us that is the most important thing otherwise we will all be the pashu and will repeat the uh, cycle again and again so that is why we need to develop that atmic vision for that you need to get rid of the bondage so that is why then you will develop happiness what is happiness happiness is union, union with god. god everybody knows that there's one answer so at least we remember that important saying so we even put that in eternal company happiness is only by union with god happiness you won't get by the various uh, uh, wonderful food or uh, entertainment or relationship family friends they are all nice to have that if you see god in them but the ultimate happiness is by prabhakti that supreme love for god and seeing that one oneness as ishavashi upanishad says tatra ko moha ko shoka ekatva manupashtha for that you need to have that oneness so that is why he says before swami talked about sudarshana good vision do you know what is good vision only one vision we are all blind dual mind is half blind swami said very simple as long as we see uh, dvaita dual mind dvaita ba is half blind advaita darshanam jnanam only true knowledge only true vision is be able to uh, see that uh, oneness otherwise will be going on uh, getting this uh, mixed up vision sairam